In this video tutorial, we're going to talk about how splitters should be handled when importing a model that was created in version 2018 or earlier into the new version 2019. And we're actually going to start by just defining what a splitter is and how it was used in version 18 or previous and how it's used now in version 2019. So we're going to start by opening up Builder 2018. We're going to be using mainly Floor Pro today, so we'll go ahead and turn on Floor Pro. And we'll, we'll model a slab here. So we're just going to take just any ordinary slab. And for this slab, we're going to model maybe a couple of walls. We'll model a few columns here. I'm also going to model uh, openings. Okay, and on this slab, we're also going to insert a few points, and I'll just create a balcony of sorts here, something, something like that. Now, in version 2018, just one very simple example is if, if I create, let's assume I want to just put a design strip up at this topper frame line. We have a wall and two columns, and I go to floor design, and I just create a strip um, like like this. Okay, and let's say I want to end the strip there. So we have these gaps, and I'm going to mark these gaps here. We have a gap here. This is gap one. And over here we have gap two between the end of the support line or beginning of the support line and the edge of the slab. In version 2018 and previous, um, this could cause problems with, uh, especially with uh, generating the, the proper design strip. So if we're not going to add any other support lines at these lower frame lines, for example, maybe this support line here, and I might even have this support line here, if those are not added and we're just looking at one particular strip, I need to at least add a support line which bounds the edge of the tributary. So, or excuse me, I, I would add a splitter. So I'm going to add a splitter like so. This is going to create an, a boundary for the design strip to be generated within this zone. So if we take this now and I generate that splitter, this is an X support line, so I'm going to be using an X splitter. I'm just going to add a splitter like like so. So this offers the user some flexibility um, in being able to generate custom design strips. Now, if I generate the strip, you can see that there's a warning. It says it found one support line with less than two sections on it, which is this support line. And the reason this is happening is because this endpoint and this endpoint do not terminate at either a slab edge or another boundary, which is a splitter. So in this version of the software in previous, we require, in this case, another boundary. This would either have to be stretched out to here, this would be stretched out to here, or I would put a splitter along here and here. And this can get very complicated for complicated slabs where you have the need for many, many splitters because of things like this. So if I go ahead now and, and add those splitters, let me do that. I'll just go from here and I'll just go up vertically. I, I at least need to go to the slab edge. In this case, I've gone beyond. That should be uh, okay for this example. Now I've close this off completely by either a virtual boundary, which is the splitter, or a slab edge. And you can see the top boundary is a slab edge, every other edge is a splitter. So, so now this will generate a, a strip in this, in this direction. Now I'm going to go ahead and save this. And I'm going to save it again as a 2019 version. And we're going to go ahead and we're going to open also version 2019. And we'll go ahead and launch the same, same model. This, this model will be the 19 version. Now in this case, let's go ahead and I'll go back and just dump out this support line. I'll, I'll clear that out. I'm going to delete this splitter and this splitter. In this version of the program, 
the only splitter you really need is the one that bounds the edge if if that's necessary in this case it's necessary only because we're adding one support line in a slab that would actually require more but we do not need the splitters at the start end which are perpendicular let's say to the um, to the direction of the support line so if I generate the sections here you can see the program can determine and dictate where the actual tributary needs to start and stop this allows me to turn that tributary on like so so when you have a slab that's much larger than this and requires more intricate work in terms of splitters this can become a huge time savings especially in version 2019 let's go back over to version 2018 and I'm gonna go ahead now and just delete out the splitters I'll clear the design strips and we'll modify this like it would normally be modeled maybe I go out to the slab edge and then we'll add another strip here okay and we're gonna stop that tendon there or excuse me that support line at that point here I'm going to um, do something like like that and then I'm also going to add a support line maybe along here so this might be a legitimate layout of, of design or support lines for generation of, of strips um, and let, let's say also we have we have a beam let me add a beam right here this is an odd location for a beam but we'll add one just to demonstrate this so this is a two-way slab support line and let's say we we actually discontinue that so we can put a beam support line along that path so I'll add here another support line and this support line will be labeled a beam okay now in version 2018 there's there's a few very distinct locations where I will absolutely need a splitter other than just the splitter which kind of bounds off the the tributary maybe I do that and you know that so in this case let's let's go ahead and and mark these points I'm going to need one where I have a, a support line that stops or terminates starts or terminates inside of the slab region so this one this is this this is a discontinuous support line there's a two-way slab here and another one here this one is continuous through through here but we actually have this one branching off so this one here and this one here has two points where I'm going to need a splitter and then I also may need splitters around these openings um, I want the, the program I do not want any uh, section cuts extending through the openings so I'll lay this out as I would do it in version 2018 and uh, before I actually do that I'm gonna save Let's see this is strips 19 I'm gonna go back and save this as strips 18 and then I'll save again okay and I'm gonna open we're working now in version Actually, I'm not sure what version we're in. Let me go and check that. Okay, we're in version um, 19. Okay, now we're now we're back in version 18. So this is version 18, and where I would add splitters for this particular um, setup and arrangement would be we're going to use just again X splitters so I would need a splitter here I'd probably bring that over to the to the opening face and back up I'm just chaining the splitter there I know I want to bound off the openings so I want to ha add this splitter the one that kind of just wraps around the opening like this and I'll talk more about what's going to happen with these different conditions this this splitter here remember is discontinuous It's just filled into that gap so I'm going to add another support line from there down I'll do this one where I'll chain that along the edge of the opening this will come down to the slab edge okay we talked about this beam uh, support line and I'll need one there also and then two more so just for this tiny slab we have you know 
a nice handful of splitters. And what will happen is because we, we have support line one, two, and three, these are our main support lines. Support line one, everything above this is going to just go out to the slab edge. This will be the tributary extent out to this edge. Below it, it's going to divide this in half up to the splitter that I've added. Now in 19, that splitter is not required. The program can, can generate this without that vertical splitter, without this one, without potentially these two. Within this zone where I have a support line and three splitters, it's going to take all of that because there's nothing to split it with. There's no, there's no other support line here, so it just takes the full uh, region. And then we get into something that looks like this because there is a support line below this this gets split in half, this gets split in half, and so on. So the outcome of this arrangement would look something something like this. Okay, And if I now take this arrangement, and you can see, by the way, the openings and the, um, the, there's no section cuts going through the openings. So I'll save that. I'm going to go back over here to 19. Let me just close out of 19. I'll close that down. And we're going to now open up Builder 19. Now, the tendency would be for a user to um, take a model that had been created in 18 or 17 or version 15 or 12 and, and just open that in Builder 19 without any requirement uh, to do anything. Now, unfortunately, that's not, that's not true. Um, in Builder 19, it would be benefit the user to, to just completely delete all splitters. I'm not going to do that up front. I'll show the process what happens if you don't do that. So if I open up this model here and we're going to just delete the strips out okay, and we'll generate the, the section cuts. Now in this case the the splitters here are you know they're being recognized um, you know, pr pretty pretty good in terms of how version 19 is is working. However, for a model, for example, something like let me go ahead and open up this model. For something like this, let's assume this was built in version 2018, and um, we have obviously many many support lines. Let's delete out the the strips. You can see we have support lines on each of these beams. In version 18, we had to have splitters at all these endpoints where we have beams. So if I turn on now the splitters in this case, you can see all the splitters required for this for this model. We had to have splitters, you know, where we have termination points of support lines. For example, here we wanted to split out this region. We have a lot of beam support lines that start and stop within the main slab region. So this required a lot of splitters. If I import a model like this into Builder 19, the first thing that I would do would just be to turn on all of my splitters. Okay, and this only has X support lines, so I'm just going to simply delete out the splitters. I'll select by type, splitter, delete. That's the, the first absolute first thing I need to do. And now, notice this has no splitters whatsoever. Here we weren't worried about passing through openings. I'll show you how you can handle that, and then we'll go back to the simple model. So now we're going to just go to floor design. We're going to generate the cuts for this model. For example, these beams. Had I done that in version 18, I would have had a lot of problems with the, with the strips for beams. But you can see now the program can treat beams properly, even if the points are away from the slab edge and generate the design cuts and the, the strips properly. Now here we, we see we have this this strip kind of starts here and then it kind of starts to, to grow in terms of the section cut lengths. And the reason for that is this this point terminates here so once you get beyond that point now we're actually trying to subdivide based on this support line below that. If you want to use splitters to customize how that's that's treated I could just add a splitter an X splitter and say well I want this this beam to just have the same section cut along its path so I'll just add a splitter there to terminate these cuts at that boundary that is the purpose of the splitter in this case and we'll generate that 
Okay, and now you can see those actually stop at that location. So if I have an opening, let's say I, I want the, the program to not cut these sections through the opening, another use of a splitter would be to just simply add a, a splitter here and here. What does that do? That allows the program to terminate the point, uh, the section cut at the face of this splitter. From this side, this will stretch down to this splitter, and this will be void. So I don't need to add splitters, you know, along here and chain them together. That's no longer required. So now if we regenerate, we can see where that's, that's cut there. And this could be done for all openings. Again, if you have a, a model that was created in a previous version that has splitters and lots of splitters that were done relevant to that particular version, we've improved the feature. Because of that, the user needs to make sure that they, they clear out the splitters, regenerate the strips, and then determine where they might need splitters in the new functionality case of the splitter. Here's another example where this, this is actually stretching out all the way down to here because this is outside of the slab. So in this case, I probably would just take that point and move it back up into the slab like so. If I regenerate, this should cut off now at the face right there. Okay, so let's go back. Let's go back over here to this model. Okay, in this model, we're going to, we remember we started in 18, we created all these splitters, and then we brought it into version um, version 19. So I'll select again the splitters, delete them. We have no splitters, and we're just going to generate as is in version 19. Now, I might preemptively say, well, I, I know that I'm going to need splitters potentially, um, along these opening edges. So we'll just we'll just add those. We we know we want to bound out the openings. So we'll add those four. That's pretty much all we need. And now we get our strips in version 19 like so. You can see there's like this area where we have a little bit of overlapping. Um, we could add another splitter up along there. And now you get all of them nicely cut along that along that splitter face. If you have any questions about this process, please let us know. Um, you can contact us at support at adaptsoft.com. Thank you.